See a lot of people getting a little excited about the idea of a bikini thing. Not gonna happen. The last time I did something to appease the subs, I tried to jump off my wall parkour style for high spirits and kind of mess up my ankle. That's not happening again anytime soon. So I'm sorry guys, no bikinis. <laughs> I don't even own a bikini, so sorry. <laughs> You are s just, you know what, between all the makeup you wear and the time you spend on your hair and the bikinis you own, you're just the girliest girl I know. I know. Thank you. <laughs> Alright guys, this is a new best of three. This is still uh, the round away from the semifinals, so it's going to be the quarterfinals. I don't know why I said it so complicatedly like that. It's just the quarterfinals. The player, the winner of this goes on to fight against Jokshi in the semifinals. And uh, yeah, we'll see who can make it through. It's a ZVZ spawning in the lower left corner of the map from the team Dignitas. It's going to be the Green Zerg player, the Polish pride known as Teffel. And if we're right as the Red Zerg, it is Orc. Yeah, FM Esports is uh, still floating around. Definitely, you know, they used to have like a lot of content driven stuff. Like they'd be putting out interviews all the time. You'd see stuff like going to various events and they had more players. But uh, of recent days, you don't really hear too much of FM. I hear it on the radio. Uh, nah. <laughs> funny. <laughs> it was the orc that was a player who's been around for quite some time. I don't honestly like I, I I feel so dumb saying this. I don't know if he's gonna have what it takes to beat Teffel. Teffel's been a completely like next level player in, in the last several months, and on top of this is the ZVZ, which is already hard enough control as is, not because it's Zerg versus Zerg, but just because it's a mirror matchup to begin with. Units are critical, you can't afford to throw things away. And if Orc makes silly mistakes early on, or hell if Teffel makes silly mistakes early on, it can really influence the way the late to mid game ends up going. And let's be honest, like, whether it's Roaches or Mutas, outside of Zerglings and Banelings, it's really hard to make up mistakes. Because, like, Zerglings and Banelings, you get one good Bailing hit, you're lucky you make up the game. Or maybe you get ahead in the game. But Roaches and Mutalists, you're not afforded that same opportunity. Hmm. Well, I guess neither of these players are really the type to, uh, you know, get a series started off the bat with something cheesy or rushed. Sometimes we see Frost first in the ZDZ, but you see one player just, uh... You know, like Jadong, I suppose. <laughs> Go for like a 10 pool. Because, um, you know, you expect it the least on Frost, so then it works. Of course, all that all that mind game stuff. But nope, just uh, pretty standard. Getting the, those bases up, getting their gases as well. No one's going to go gases, although this is, a, this is a pretty good map for uh, waiting because the uh, wall up at the front's not too hard to get. Yeah, I'm. I'm wondering if Teffel. Okay, so Teffel's been like really aggressive the last few ZVZs I've seen of him. Like, not to the point where it's like, YOLO, six pool, LOL, whatever. But I mean, like, you know, that six minute ling all in. Forget bailings, those can be put on hold because you just try and get your opponent before they've got anything available and ready. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what he's going to be doing. Mm -hmm. But he did pull off of gas, which is the only thing that's making me bring up that point. Because usually if you pull off of gas, you're usually looking to invest early on into like either a very fast third or a lot of lings. And the fast third is not a common thing to see. Yeah, Orc got a really fast bailing nest, and he's still all on gas. I feel like he's going to be the one that's uh, going to be aggressive. Uh, if it is, it's probably going to be with the next larva pop on both hatcheries, which is a few seconds away. Actually, the Ling gets in here. What is it, Scout? What is it, Scout? Sees all the guys still on gas. And sees the bailing nest. Uh, last second. Um, yeah, it's the 536 minute. Those are like the two windows for larva injects, and like when you decide to just pump yeah. this. But I think upon scaling the bailing nest, Teffel is gonna, yeah, puts guys back a couple more on gas, puts the uh, bailing nest of his own down, and uh, unfortunately, not gonna be able to carry through with any sort of all in. If that's what his plan was, but not saying that it necessarily uh, should have been. We have the spine car coming down too for safety. This will delay his layer a little bit, but it kind of guarantees that you stay in the game a little bit longer if there's gonna be bailings in your doorstep. Where on the <laughs> other hand, Orcs actually opted to go for that quick layer and uh, yeah yeah all gas is probably gonna be mutalisks i think he was gonna go for an attack but since it was scouted he um just droned up because of course there are times where like you know getting scouted always sucks but in zvz if it's it's really easy to trick someone into making more lings when you make drones then suddenly things have turned back into your favor uh so i like the fast layer though as long as he actually doesn't allow the scout again like getting scout once Okay, you fixed it. Getting scouted twice, I don't know. Um, uh, the Bane Ling's probably gonna be enough to deter it. Yeah, it's, just, it's just not a lot he can really get done to low amount of Ling's. Even with two Bane Ling's to keep it off, but uh, he still almost gets a worker kill for it. Gets actually a worker kill on almost another one. Bane Ling's gonna... Ooh. 
Quinn's <laughs> gonna get the job done if you know the Banelings don't. I actually, it'd probably be better uh, if he just keeps the Banelings alive. I don't like that he's moving out with it. It's such a precious <laughs> unit. He got another uh, drone at the end, so a little cheeky right there. He did scout the two gases on the on the low ground. Of course, he knew that there was one in the you know one above. So he, it's possible that he's thinking he might be going for a spire. I mean, there, there's probably a fourth gas up there, you know. So he's gonna be prepared around like the timing that it would come, which is gonna be like eight thirty nine minutes, I guess, um, or late because he'll wait for the mutas. But anyways, so he's actually gonna look to attack. This is a rather fragile point. No, actually, oh no, things. surrounding those banelings is not a good idea! <laughs> Monster kill. just lost all of his lings across the map like that, so whether he wanted to attack or not, it's gonna be relevant now. One baneling <laughs> will pop off here in the center, but Tuffle, you know, he just made a huge run of lings, and I think one of the big things for him right now is he's gotta knock down that third of Orc. He knows that if you're gonna go and fest, or sorry, uh, Spire from Utilis, it's gonna be very, very, very gas heavy. Now, Orc did yeah. actually transition to Spine Crawler over here, which I think is kinda cool. You don't see a lot of players do that, but this will add to the damage quite a bit. 22 links out of the way for Orc. He's got a couple more Banelings walking forward, but the Spines is in some danger for now. Decides to back off this Teffel. The Infestation Pit's a really curious choice. I kind of misspoke earlier, but I mean, I don't know. Infestors, I've never really seen Infestors straight up shut Noodleus down, but they can. They've always got that potential. Whether it's a Fungal Growth or some Infested Terrans. Yeah. It can be, it really, I guess, depends on the on the game, honestly. Ooh, yeah, yeah, on the on the game, because, you know, sometimes you see those really great fungals that actually absolutely shut it down, but then I feel like most of the times I feel, I see, like, mist fungals, you know, and, like, infestors dying, and the transition yeah. into Roach is really, really strong for the uh, the person that went mute is, because that's what happens. Like, if you can if you can have a follow-up with Roaches, and they just wasted all their fungals, I mean, they, they spend a lot of money into those fungals. They don't have, they don't have for an attack, so, uh, that can definitely happen. Right now, they're just constantly like, skirmishing with these lings. Um, honestly, usually at this point, they kind of just give up on it. But, uh, you know, they're constantly making them. Trying to kill each other's third. It's not happening, though. Oh, Teffel, those banelings are pretty slow. Are there any banelings at home for Orc? He could he could do a lot of damage to the third before the banelings are there. Uh, but the Mutalists are out now, too, is the thing. And, yeah. Uh, they're not exactly going to clean up lings really fast, but they will clean them up with no repercussions, which is the big deal. It's buying uh, Teffel a lot of time. I mean, his spore cards don't take that long to finish, but uh, in case <laughs> he forgot to make them, I guess. Uh, there's actually a lot of investors on the way. Eight it's right eight, now, yeah. plus one missile is also going to finish. Took forever to roach for him. I mean, he's had that plus one going for a while and has not had anything to actually use it on, except for the queens, I suppose. Uh, just now, get that roach worn. And uh, I, Orc should get his own very soon as well. You don't typically stay on Mutas unless your opponent goes Mutas. Well, I guess it, there's a thing, too, like, where the biggest threat to the Mutalist is, of course, like, having Hydralists or Infestors or whatever to deal with them. But if you can get that sort of snowball count... Oh! oh. oh almost gets the Fungal. So close to landing. I yeah. thought I was going to get it. Like, seriously, but jeez. Yeah, geez. me too. So, uh, okay, here's the thing with Fungal Growth, guys. The damage on it does... It's just... It's really not a lot. The damage from a Fungal Growth... It takes, like, six or something absurd to kill a Mutalist. Like, maybe even more than that. I don't know offhand, but... Uh, the regen from Mutalist will persist and do a little bit through it, and it helps a lot to keep them alive. So you really need to get them on top of a Spore Crawler near a Queen. Hell, I have Infested Terrans underneath it. Fungal Growths alone are not the efficient way to shut them down, but holding them in place of things that can kill them is the best-case scenario. Mm hmm Currently, the drone count's actually really even. The army count actually favors Teffel right now. Orc made an interesting decision. Once he saw the infestors, he went straight up to his own infestation pit, and actually it's going to be for a hive. Uh, I mean, seriously, the most common follow-up you usually see is into roaches, you know? And he's also getting what? melee. Is he going to go for fast ultralisk? That's what I'm thinking. Like, in ZVZ, like, <laughs> it's so hard to shut ultralisks down. Like, you could try and kite with roaches, and people will tell you it's, like, a viable way to do it, but 9 times out of 10, it's just not usually going to be the case when you've got so much going on. You don't have the APM to actually micro 7 sets of roaches away from, like, 3 ultralisks. Um, with the Infested Terrans coming down, a spam of Infested Terrans might not be too bad, but without Burrotech, Temple can't really sneak anything across the map. He's constantly been trying to get into the server with the legs. I applaud him for that, but Orc has been on the ball as far as responsiveness goes. I'm really worried for Orc. I mean, not only is the build just a risky build, but there's just like, there's not even like a roach backup plan, you know? Like, if you see them attacking, you can't just spam 30 roaches because the ultras aren't ready. He doesn't even have a roach warren. Um, you know, the supply difference looks really scary too, but keep in mind, roaches really do inflate supply, so Teffel's not, I, I don't know, as scary, I suppose, but still, still pretty scary. And once he's maxed out too, he should try and push. Actually, starting right now. Yeah, the Hydra's incorporating this is going to add a lot of damage no matter what the composition is. But for now, like, 
the ultras are on the way. Like the camera's being built, but the upgrades aren't there. The ultras aren't going to be there. Once they're out, they'll do some damage for sure. But you know, they're frenzied units. You can't fungle them. They got so much health. It takes forever to kill them. I mean, there's nothing that Temple has right now is exactly going to be the best case scenario to deal with the ultralisks. Orc's going to try and defend with nothing but banelings. Uh, that could work for the Hydras, but not necessarily against the Rangers. Fungals, like fungals, like unless he splits his banelings in like five groups. Yeah, that too. I don't, I don't, I don't like this. And he just wasted. Or I don't, I don't, I don't. I want to see until I say wasted. But he just used all of his gas that he was setting up for Ultralisk on all those banelings. So the Ultralisk Cavalry is gonna finish, and he's gonna be able to make one Ultralisk, maybe two. Yeah, he's sticking the fourth base too, which. If you can get away with this, is what he's really gonna need. But right now, Tuffle's coming across the map with an almost level two upgrade to like all max out Roach, Hydra, Infestor army. I mean, no, the Infested Terrans, they don't get the upgrades like they did once upon a time, but still, they're very potent. You put some fungal growths down to lock the units in place, and your ranged units will prevail. And here come the Ultras, but I don't know if it'll be enough. The low ish Hydra count could come into effect if uh, they're busy shooting the Ultras. The Mutalis may come in and add a lot of damage to this, but. For now, that's a lot of infested Terrans on both sides. There's a fungal growth catches the mutalisks. Orcs going for like a, a he's trying to do like an attack behind this to like these rallied lings, but that's not gonna work. There's like an ultralisk coming up, but this is not looking good. Tuffle's armies remain somewhat untouched behind this. And this is uh well that's the death of that third base. Drone's gonna die here too, and wow, the ultras are actually getting destroyed. The counterattack from orcs is actually not too poor. It's killing some workers, but I mean Tuffle can't make anything else to respond at home. These Hydra's gonna pop out in a moment's time, but for now, he's just trying to defend with drones. So both players taking some economic losses, but in the end, I think Tuffle's army is just gonna be too much to deal with. Yeah, that's why Orc doesn't immediately GG, because sometimes the, the Ultras can bring you back, but not this time. Uh, you know, I gotta say, I didn't really like Orc's game plan right there. Like, I don't really feel like he should have been as behind as he was. Like, there wasn't a definitive moment. Like, the Mutalists just were made. There, like, I know there's some... The threat yeah, that's of, a good point. fungals, but like still, he didn't pick off much more than like the overlords on his half of the map. He didn't even go like to pick off Teffel's stray overlords or pick like the odd drone or two trying to dodge. I don't, know. I don't. You're right. I I don't like the way that one played out for work. He had a good composition to start, but Teffel uh, brought it home. As game one, though, in a best of three, we'll see what the next map's gonna be. As stated before, guys, we can keep commercials just between series for today, and uh, 